Hey everybody, it's Jochen Hyden and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Hyden campaign. This is January 26th, turn 51, 1942. Okay, grabbed another base just south of Bataan. This is a proximity grab. That's one less base I have to land forces on now, that's good. Oh, don't... Oh, okay. Well... Now we know for a fact the Dutch uh, sub presence is still alive and well here. It's not going away. These are just some APDs I've got on a little uh, a little run here, but I think I need to get my ASW working near Cooktown again because he's camping it out. Isn't that crazy that the Dutch subs are nowhere near the Dutch East Indies? They're in India, they're in Australia, but they're nowhere near the Dutch areas. Go figure, right? Okay, this is us landing at uh, Banjur Masin on Borneo. So I'm actually landing again here at uh, Sinkep because the last, when I brought in this partial engineer regiment, none of the actual AV uh, squads came with it. It just dropped off the engineers and they can't take the base on their own. So I had to make a second landing. Okay, so we got some daylight now. Let's see what kind of naval activity we get. Night phase is pretty quiet. Ah, well that's not good. These guys are dead. Those are the cruisers that we were missing a few days ago. <sighs> I seriously doubt these APDs are going to be able to get away. Dang it. Nope, now I know where they're at. Yeah, these things are done. Marblehead, huh? That came from the Dutch East Indies. All right, I think we know how this is going to go. I have two dead APDs that had troops aboard. Nice knowing you guys. Yeah. Should have known. And, you know, it's very likely that these guys are actually coming in for a bombardment. That's my guess, a cooktown. So, um, yeah, that's not good. Okay, so that was just uh, some sighting stuff there. Great. A lot of canceled missions. A lot of... Oh, man. That stinks. Our whole Cloncray mission got scrubbed today. That's... Ugh. All right, clear skies over length, so hopefully we can get some damage on these troops here today. Seventh Construction Regiment 
and a fourth Chinese Space Force. So that's what we got in Kienko so far. All right, so this bombing of Nanning is actually pretty important. Because we're actually going in there this turn. And I'm bombing this base here because I need to soften it up. Wow. That shouldn't take long with that kind of damage. I wasn't exactly sure what he had there, so I, I think I overkilled that a bit. Oh! I don't know what happened here. Uh, I don't recall ordering my my aircraft to go in the Chungking at all. Not at that altitude. So I don't really know why that just happened, but that was a waste. I'll have to look at the orders on that. I don't know why that happened. Man, I don't know why my bomber said Chungking. I did not order that. Whew. Look at all of that. It's just too core, but we hit him a lot. Ah, uh, kind of knew that was coming. So, this is the this is the air power come out of Toowoomba. It's going to vaporize this Japanese unit here completely. There's no way they're going to survive this. These B26s are dangerous. And there it is, completely wasted. It, you notice how uh Helson always gets great weather for his bombing raids, clear sky. And they come in very low altitude. That unit is absolutely gone. So now we have nothing south of, of Townsville to stop him. Well, I don't know what happened with that Chung King raid. I did not order a Chung King a, stri a strike, so that was a waste of bombers that didn't need to happen. Canceled missions. And we're just bombing Clark here, trying to get some supply hits, which we're not really getting today. Okay, so that's the air phase. Um, a weird attack on Chungking, which I didn't order, and another unit vaporized in Australia by his B-26s. There, he's bombarding Townsville. <laughs> okay, that's fine. 
Oh, this is a whole different unit here. Check that out. Wow, look at that. Okay, the Pennsylvania... The, wow! I think we're actually seeing some Allied air power showing up here. I mean, some ships. This is a whole different task force. So he bombarded us. Oh, yikes. That's a little concerning. Okay, we got an issue. <laughs> Australia is going to be get a get to be a bit of a problem here soon. All right, here we go. Land attack phase. All right, hopefully we can take this this turn. Uh, all right, we didn't take it, but we we chip off some more, some more damage there. So um, I think only one of these two uh, 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 Japanese tank units were actually in the right mode to attack. So I'm, it's not surprising that that's all we did to him. But look at that; he's almost got nothing left there. Okay, and this is my tank regiment at uh, Joke, J Joke Jakarta. Hello, my misguided oh. friends. This is your number one enemy, hmm. Orphan Anne, from Radio Tokyo, with another blow to your morale and some music to console you. Today, the Imperial government announced that the ever-victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Jakarta. Okay, well, we captured Jakarta. Which wasn't much of a fight. Okay, Japanese shock attack at Nanning. So my troops have come across the river here. Um, I'm hitting them from both sides. I've got units in the hex and the guy is shocking attack. I really hope we can take this. And it doesn't look like we're going to. Uh, dang it. Oh no. This is... This is not good. This is not good at all. Um, I really thought we would have had a better uh, effort than that. Uh, we didn't even take out a fort. Oh, man, this sucks. This whole southern China thing is really turning into a mess. All right, so we defeated this base force here, but that's not really much to brag about. And we destroy the last little remnants of this Dutch unit here. So that's done. Okay, and this is us trying to clear out this core in Puchang. And we can't even do that. Look at that. How does that work? 300 to 12. And it gets adjusted to 33 to uh, 23. That's so ridiculous. I have the worst roles in this game, guys. How does this make any sense to you? Ridiculous, right? And then we capture Ben Collis because we we vaporized his units there. Wow, this turn sucked. Like very little went well for me this turn. Just upgrading some ships here. <sighs> 
Man, that ugh. Not a good turn at all. So much crap happened on this map, as in like not good stuff. I don't even know where to start. So we'll just start with the numbers on this one. Today was a mess. Zero allied losses, seven Japanese. I had three Sally shot down by Flock on a mission I did not order. Two one C ops losses and a couple others. Of these seven pilots, sorry, seven aircraft shot down, three KIA and one wounded pilot. What a waste. Let's see if we can figure out who that wounded pilot is. Mm, okay, looks like we might get him back. And reserve. Now we've got three pilots stacking up here that have no return date. <sighs> Looking at army lost points for this turn, another bad day for us. We lost six. He lost 26. My six were mostly lost at sea. Uh, when their APDs were shot up, and we'll look at that. Um... Last turn, we lost two APDs uh, to his 8-inch armed heavy cruisers near Bowen. Uh, didn't see this coming at all. So uh, these guys had troops aboard and they were shot up. Don't like losing APDs because they're valuable to me. Although these are World War I vintage, so they're not particularly great. But I still don't want to be losing them. Uh, no strap points because our mission got canceled over Clonkery today. Uh, for the turn, we gained 7 points, but the win ratio dropped substantially to 2.568. Well, that's not substantial, but it dropped. Reason being is he gained more points, so it makes this, the, you know, this is the denominator of this score. When he goes up in points, it actually hurts our ratio. So we need him to go down and us to go up way more than that. So, not ideal. Okay, uh, look at that combat reporter today we did have the um first of all we had a sub spotted off cooktown didn't think much of it but later on in the turn at the hex 97 145 so keep that in mind 97 145 four light cruisers and two heavy cruisers all australian but the marblehead's not all but the marblehead um well, actually, I guess that's British, too. I don't know. Whatever. Um, intercepted my my troop transports here. So I think it's pretty clear what's going on here. We'll talk about it in a minute. But we had two Allied heavy cruiser task forces operating in the vicinity of Townsville. On the ground, we had, a again, a absolutely ridiculous... Um, absolutely ridiculous combat result here where we had 300 AV to his 12 and this is the odds we got ridiculous I don't understand how this even works and I checked the fatigue on these units they're they're very low Nanning my big attack on landing Nanning failed miserably and now we're in real big trouble in this part of China because we're retreating from Lu Chao and on top of that our forces that I sent into Nanning were unable to break through even remotely it, it Ugh, I'm out of words here. Uh, again, in uh, India, our units are heavily disrupted, so we didn't do a whole lot of damage to him, but we are keeping these guys pinned down here. We did take Jakarta. Bengalus, we took that. This is an oil base. Uh, Puchang, we did disrupt it. We did defeat a unit there. And another victory on Java. In the air... Um, the only thing that was really upsetting was this here. Where was it? Uh, these Sallies were, they went into Chungking. I don't know why. I did not order them to do this. Okay, I did not order them to attack Chungking. If we look at this unit here, the, this is the unit right here. Um, their orders are ground attack with no destination. I guarantee you I set a target last turn. It defaulted away and they went after Chungking. What I think is happening is I am attacking these units down here and they keep moving hexes at some point and the unit doesn't see them and then it defaults to Chungking. So that's what happened there. I don't know why. Pain in the butt. 
Uh, let's see here. We'll look at Sigint. Sydney, Charleville, Victor Palmyra, and Bombay. I none of this is any good to me. This ally, this Japanese Sigint is pretty useless. It doesn't tell me anything really. You know, we could look at Sydney. At best, it tells me there's aircraft there. Gee, thanks, that helps. Charleville, we get nothing out of that. So Japanese Sigint has proven to be a big pain in the butt for me. I'm getting no value out of any of it, and with the exception of getting tipped off about stuff happening down here. I actually do have a submarine heading down here to um, actually have a couple submarines heading down here and we're going to deploy and see if we can intercept his his uh, trade routes here because we do have SIGIN on this operation. That's That was from a, a while ago. Op support on the Intel. Um, you can see that he's built Auckland up to a size 7 airfield which is bad. Pago Pago is now size 3 and some fortifications. On the Japanese, we did capture Jakarta and Bengkalis and Lubang. Unfortunately, two of those APDs were lost with troops here. And lastly, a little bit of good news. You can see that we had some R&D advancement here. So we'll go take a look at that real quick and then we can talk about R&D before we go around the map. So here you go. The Aichi HH-60 and the Mitsubishi HH-43 engines advanced a month in R&D. So when you get that message, what it means is that your R&D for whatever that engine is has moved forward a month. So we'll take a look at that. Wait, I need engines. So right now we have these factories and they're producing two R&D points per day. Every 100% you get you advance the arrival of that engine forward one month. So the original des uh, time for the arrival of this engine was October 1942. Now it's September. And once we get 200 again, it'll move forward a month. Okay? On the HA-43, uh, we have five factories producing. So that's going to be 5%, five, five points a day towards R&D. Once this gets 200 again, we move this forward. So we've gained a month on the arrival time of this engine. So if you think about it, every 20 turns, we move the arrival of this engine forward one month. All right, let's go around the map. Starting in uh, Pearl. See, this guy's not damaged, but he's spotted. We see he's got nothing but some uh, coastal minesweepers at Pearl so far. No major activity up here in the northern pacific home islands are looking good in china we'll start at the top you see here he's moved more units into kuncheng but actually i'm fine with that because all he's doing is diluting the units that are further south and i've got units coming up this way as well so we're going to go ahead and continue to push for kuncheng i think that's our best chance to break through here because unlike fortifications on these terrain hexes it's easier to reduce the fortifications at a base like this like he we can break them down faster than he can build them up if i put 2000 av in this hex eventually we will break through and slop the oil coming from lanchow it's gonna take me about a month to get all my troops moved up this way uh in this hex uh we're ready to engage again but again i've noticed a bug i've noticed a bug on the ground combat once again and it's the second time it's happened to me in two weeks I set the 12th Army Headquarters to move into this hex, and I set all of the other units to follow. But what happened was, that the, by the time they moved into the hex, all the infantry divisions made it in, and the HQ did not move. So now it has to start all over again. This is a bug. There's no reason why the Army HQ, which was leading the stack, gets left behind and the rest of them go forward. So this is a big pain in my butt that this keeps happening to me. So I hopefully can get this resolved quickly because I hate when this happens. So I was talking to Desert Wolf about this and he suggested that I move each unit individually and don't tell anything to follow or move like that or else this happens. Now I've had two HQs left behind uh, moving into these hexes when they were leading troops in. Very inconvenient. Alright, so now here's the big story. Um, my whole southern offensive is ground to a screeching halt. We've been kicked out of uh, Luchow. 
he is now pursuing, and if he shock attacks across here next turn, we're dead. Because he's got 1,200, 1,300 AV here against my 300 on this crappy terrain. So what I'm going to do here is put long range cap up here to ensure he doesn't try to bomb us and slow us down. And I'm also going to bomb his troops to slow them down to knock them out of move mode. Because if he shock attacks across this river before we get out of here in time, we're done for. These units are retreating into uh, Nanning to hopefully at least take this base. Uh, and then we'll figure out what we want to do here, which I'm guessing we need to build up a fortified position in Nanning and just kind of hold out here until I can get reinforcements because this whole thing down here has been a giant mess for me, and I, I did not play it right. Northern Northern offensive looking great. In the south, we're actually on the run now because of my mismanagement of the whole Luchel operation. Okay, Burma, uh, my aviation unit continues to creep forward towards... Uh, Magway, where the oil's at. And then I have this unit moving towards Tungi. And then once we take this base, I'll continue... Actually, you know what? We can go ahead and get all these guys moving now. Let's just tell them to move now. Set all to march. So instead of having them follow, I'm just setting them all to march, so they're going to move at their own speeds. And I just need to make sure I put them in the right move mode here. Set all to this op mode. Okay, so we're going to continue towards Mike, Mike Tila now, since these guys will get there first. Okay, so in India, we continue to deal with the survivors of Calcutta there. We've spotted an enemy unit here, which I assume has come from Lido. But he's still stuck because of this space and its um, rail line blocking it. So we have temporarily cut off the retreat path for these guys. But if he continues moving forward, that's going to be kind of a difficult for us to stop. Um, as soon as we take this base, uh, we can start flooding in all directions. Everywhere we want to go. So that's what needs to happen next turn. Okay. Uh, looking in the uh, Sumatra area, we just took Bengkala's. We will be taking Madan within two turns. I'm continuing to work on these guys, the enemy here at uh, Langsa, and I think we'll be getting ready for another attack here soon. Uh, I'm just waiting for the dis for the disruption and fatigue to drop just a little bit more on these guys, and then we'll try another attack, supported by bombers out of Singapore. We still don't have AV in sync cap so I really messed this up I don't know why I can't seem to get enough AV into this place I, I would keep leaving behind the bits of this unit that have the striking power see unit organization all the assault value is still in Singapore so it transported those last which I needed them there first <sighs> okay Philippines we continue to move on Butuan so these guys are heading there now to retake this base to make sure he has no way for supplies to get into him here. Up here in uh, Luzon, we can see that he's got a unit into Kabanatuan. I'm assuming that this is an armored unit because it got here pretty fast. I don't really care though because he can't take, he's not going to be able to do anything with Manila with this. So uh, he can take all these bases up here. It doesn't mean anything to me. I got everything out of there that I needed. Okay. And we'll continue to build up the space here. I've got plenty of assault value, plenty of guns, artillery. Uh, we're fine. I don't really care about this right here. Okay, Java looking really good here. Um, now we're on the way to Tejapo. Also moving into Semarang. And from there, we're going to move for Tejilat Jap. And I can start strap moving all of my heavy units back this way towards... Uh, Bandung and Batavia. So Java is actually the one place that we're doing just fine. Okay. Uh, Solomon's looking fine. Nothing significant to report here. Other than uh, we do have some threats here now because last turn, Helsin brought in a heavy cruiser task force to bombard 
Townsville, and he just ended up blowing up his own base, which is fine with me. I don't really care. I'm out of here anyway. Uh, he did cause some damage to these units, though. As you can see, they are disrupted. We've taken some losses there. But it's no matter. We're going to continue retreating towards Cairns. We lost those two APDs about was it 97, 145. So here's what I think his goal was. Uh, option A was to bombard Townsville. And option B is I believe he's heading to Cooktown to bombard it. However, he's already at nine hexes. And it's going to take him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine. He can get into this hex, but he won't be able to bombard during the night phase, which means... Um, we may have an opportunity to strike him with our aircraft during the day phase. I have torpedoes at Cooktown and Net Netties, Net Nels and Betty's ready to strike. So I'm probably going to leave these destroyers here to dissuade uh, another task force coming in here to do this. To bombard. But then we will counterattack with our Nels and Betty's armed with torpedoes to see if we can stop these guys. Um... So those heavy cruisers were actually over here two turns ago, but they moved just outside the radius of my naval search, right around the edge. And I stupidly don't have anything up anywhere north of Numea. So that's a big shortcoming in my defensive line here. I'm going to take uh, probably this unit here and send it over to... Port Moresby to get some naval search up in this area because we really need it. Maybe I'll even send it to Cooktown. I don't know. But um, I allowed him to get up here with my terrible shortcomings with naval searches. They've typically been bad all the time. So, Helsin is definitely active in this area. We have at least four heavy cruisers sighted. Multiple light cruisers as well. So, a significant naval force is in this area. And I think he's coming in here to try to stop us from bombing Conquery by attempting to bombard Cooktown. He just made a little detour over to Townsville along the way. So there's definitely a sign of life from Helsin here, guys. He's got heavy cruisers on the move. He's got... Um, he's got a, a pretty decent counterattack going on down here in, in southern China. And he's coming right for me at Nanning. So, finally, we're seeing a little bit of life out of Helsin. He did take his time doing it, but he did it. And i he's caught me with my pants down, 100%. Uh, I was not prepared for these heavy cruisers to come out from their hiding and do what they did. And this is that Sir Robin stuff, right? The thing with the Sir Robin that is good about it is you have no idea when the Allies are about to counterattack, right? You don't see it coming because... They lull you, or, or me in this case, they lull me into a false sense of security, and I just forget that he's got tons of ships that I haven't sunk yet. So I'm over here in Australia and Cooktown, happy as a clam, sending APDs out in the Coral Sea like it's like it's no big deal. Uh, and in the meantime, he was planning a counterattack that I did not see coming. And I lost ships, and I may lose some aircraft at Cooktown tomorrow because of it. So... Uh, this is a, a good lesson for me and everybody else that if your opponent is doing this, they don't do it forever. At some point, they turn around and fight. And I think we're starting to see the beginning of Helsin wake up out of his fog and do something. So well done for picking Australia as this place to demonstrate because we're not strong here now. He is. I'm not prepared for this counterattack. He is. And now we're on a back foot and scrambling. So... This turn was crap for me. I'm not happy about the fact that our bombing attack on Conquery was canceled. I'm not happy that I had ships sunk out here. I'm not happy that he's got heavy cruisers operating in here within range of bombing my important bases. I don't like how I've played Southern China at all. Um, yeah, I would call this a crap turn. It's not the end of the world. It's just a setback. So I need to get my crap together. I'll get this fixed. We'll get moving on. One last thing I want to talk about, for those of you who may be on my Discord, there was a little bit of a controversy going on, if you want to call it that. And that's part of why this turn has been delayed, and also I am incredibly busy with real life. I got kids doing stuff, girlfriend doing stuff, girlfriend's kids doing stuff. I got to work this weekend. I'm in the I'm in the Air Force, for those of you who don't know, and I have weekend duty. So, um, yeah, I haven't had a lot of time to play this week. Here's the controversy. Um, apparently, and I didn't even know this, 
if you are playing as the Allies, it is theoretically possible for you to take your restricted units in the United States, put them on a ship, and ship them to Cape Town without having to pay political points, even if they're restricted. And I found out that Helsin was doing this. It's physically possible to do it. My opinion is that he should not be doing it, and here's why. What you can do is basically take every restricted unit that you want out of the whole United States, move it quickly off map to ma with the max speed thing that the Allies can do, because I don't have a rule against that because I didn't think about it. Um, and he can dump dozens of units in Cape Town and just sit there and wait until he has enough political points to buy it. And then he just needs to ship it from Cape Town into uh, India. And that allows him to stack and, and front load a lot of powerful units in Cape Town and cut down on the trans tra transit time, right? Because if you have to wait for the political points, it takes yet they shouldn't leave the United States until you've paid for them. All right. In my opinion, it's the same thing as me taking units from Quang Tung Army, right? Like uh, this Fourth Brigade here, right? It is assigned to Quang Tung Army, so the rule would be for me to move this into China, I need to pay the political points to release it, and then I can move it into China. What he's doing is like me taking this thing. And strat moving it into uh, a Xinyang or whatever. Okay. See, the game will let me do it. Even though it's assigned to a restricted headquarters in Quangtung. It'll let me physically do it. Right. But I shouldn't do it because I haven't paid for it. So my issue with Helsin was that he's doing this. And I don't think he should. I think it violates our house rules. We've spoken about it. And I think we're on the same page on that. He did tell me he's only moved three units and they're not substantial. So I'm willing to let him continue those moves because I'm not innocent here either, guys. Full disclosure, I was looking through my own units in China and I found out that I actually have several that should not be here. Let me point them out to you. These units that say Korea Army, this guy here, this third army, these have not been paid for. They should not be in China. So I screwed up. I forgot. I lost track of what headquarters they were assigned to and I moved them from Quang Tung into China without paying political points that is against our rules so I am making Helsin a list of all the units that I found there's not a ton but there's a few I've made a I'm making a list of all the units that I accidentally moved into China that have not paid for yet I'm gonna stop their movement I'm gonna let them know what they are I'm gonna pay for them immediately before they continue moving None have been used in combat. None will be used in combat until I pay for it. So I don't want you guys to think that Helsin is the only guilty party here. I've done this too, although mine was not intentional. This is an accident. I'm going to fix it. But that's kind of some of the drama that we've been dealing with over the last day or two, trying to sort out and make sure we are on the same page with the rules. So I've messed this up. He was doing something that he physically could but shouldn't. Everything's fine. I think we're cool. So we're going to work that out, but I, I, as a matter of full disclosure, I want to show you that I'm not completely innocent here either. I've messed up as well. So uh, that's what we got going on. It's going to be a couple more days so I can get a turn back to health, and he's being very patient with me. I am communicating with him, so he knows that my real life is just a mess right now. In fact, I don't even know how I had time to make this video. I'm going to stop talking now because i got other things to do. I'll catch you guys on the next one.